much racism was when I was really little and I got told by another girl to go back to my own country and now I think when people tell me to go back to my own country you pay for the plane ticket because we were stolen from the motherland no one asked to be here and when we when we leave we'll take our monuments our food because we know you like that too our dances our hair our clothes everything that you've stolen from us and then we'll gladly go back to the motherland but now you can see how much we contribute this is ours too the UK and the US belongs to the streets. This belongs to us because we made this as well and it will not be unspoken. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! So when I say there needs to be change, there needs to be change and we demand for change. We are sick and tired of the way society treats us. Do not complain or say that all lives matter. That you are racist, you take the time to understand why you are racist. I don't want to leave, go back to your country because you are living in colonized land. If it's anyone's country, then it's mine. My ancestors were the ones that helped to build this country, so I appreciate us. When you hate people darkly, it doesn't make sense. I will always be part of the plan, and it's clear that society doesn't want black people to succeed. But guess what? We will succeed. It's economic racism. Economic, and it's been going on for 84 years before the civil rights movement. And after the civil rights movement, 52 years later, I think we're making progress. You know, making progress. Because it's 2020. If Africans are taking care of, then black lives will truly, truly, truly matter. Over there, I I'm started a black students network because I'm just so tired of black students not being listened to at white universities. And what we've done is we protested the Jamaica 50, which was earlier this year. This wasn't last year, this wasn't the year before, this was earlier this year when the British government were deporting people to Jamaica, people who have lived here all their lives since they were children. If they can hear me to come and join us, I don't know what else you have to do with your day. This would be an amazing thing to participate in. I've already seen some people join us and I've been so happy. I don't know if they can hear me, but whatever. So I'm just gonna talk to you guys and we all know what's up because that's why we're here. So I might just touch on a few things that is pervasive within our community. Um, black women matter. Black women matter even if you're not sexually attracted to them. Black women matter if they're trans. Black women matter if they're gay. My name is Anita, I'm a mixed race and I've lived in the Portsmouth area for quite a long time. The first name on that list was my nephews. He died last year and we still haven't been given a reason why. He was 32 and he didn't deserve to die. But people don't deserve the constant racism and the constant fight that's going on. We need to end it now because black lives matter and we need to keep fighting. Please keep helping us fight. Our white allies, thank you. Thank you. The march went a lot because we're not alone and it's great to see that we're not alone. And thank you so much for that. And as we were walking and we were chanting George Floyd, this guy was just sat on the grass and he said, fuck George Floyd. That's a big fuck you to us, to me, and to every black person here today and in this world. And we don't deserve that. All we want is justice and unity. That's what we want. I wrote something because otherwise I, I'll just ramble. <laughs> I don't need that today. And I wrote this yesterday and I was thinking about what to say because I don't know what else to say. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired and I'm so emotional every single day. This is a fight I've been part of my entire life. And this is the first time in my life that I've been strong enough to talk about my experiences and to talk about how this has affected me. <sighs> the last time I stood in front of so many people at the last protest, I, it wasn't planned, I didn't plan on doing it, but I felt like I needed to say something. And I told my story, experiences with racism throughout my life. I felt so alone before, what I've experienced is echoed in the story of everyone who will speak to you today. We've all been through the same thing, it's just a different face. 
but I was asked if I wanted to speak up today. My first reaction was no. I don't think I'm strong enough. I didn't think I was strong enough. Because this is terrifying and it's emotionally draining. But I thought about all those people who aren't here today that can't hear, have their voices heard. All those suppressed, alienated, and those who've been killed by the hands of those who see nothing but cut the colour of our skin. I'm always meant to be aware of the colour of my skin and to make sure my back blackness doesn't offend. I've lost a lot of friends because of racism, but then again, they didn't really see me, so they weren't really my friends. How can you say your lives matter when mine is so diminished? How can you say your lives matter when if given the opportunity they will kneel on my neck and suffocate me to death? You have stripped me of so many opportunities. You have been the, ju the jury, judge and executor of my race. You stole us from our home. You stripped us from our culture, our land. And you told us we had nothing to lose, but we had a lot to lose. And we still do. the only kindness she showed us was death because death was freedom I can't breathe these are the words that have been uttered so many times when will you let us breathe when will the inhumane killing and oppression stop how many more of us must beg for our lives until you stop seeing us from what you fear most we're tired of fighting a war that we never had an army for we seek unity, fairness and equality. Black Lives Matter movement isn't about politics. It's not a matter of opinion. It's about human rights. We have not been treated as humans. We are shown so much violence and hatred time and time again and yet there's so many out there that believe it's not that bad. The UK isn't and has never been innocent. Jimmy Budenga, who died on a plane on a Heathrow wet runway while being restrained by three immigration officers. Rashan Charles in East London, restrained by police officers and he choked to death. Sarah Reed and Seko Bayo both died in police custody. Sean Rick Brig died pinned to the ground as officers piled on top of him and stopped him from breathing. These are just a very few of the long list of victims of police brutality in the UK. Their lives mattered. My name is Medium Dean and my life matters too. <laughs> Silence is compliance and I urge you to speak up. It's a group of very strong black women. We empower each other, we support each other and we guide each other. We've shared stories, we've laughed together, we've cried together. We've created a bond that not even races in this group and it's that kind of support I wish for everyone. They've given me the strength to be here today and speak up. I wouldn't be able to fight this without some amazing people in my life and we as a race cannot fight this alone without your help. So please help us. Don't stand idly by whilst this inequality happens all around you. Don't turn a blind eye. Don't judge. Don't hate and don't discriminate. Accept our blackness because lives matter. Black lives matter. Thank you. When we say black lives matter, we aren't just saying that we're merely worthy of existing alongside those who are allowed to walk freely and flourish. We aren't just asking not to be rejected by every system in place that's meant to serve and support society. We aren't just asking not to be murdered by those sworn to protect us or by anyone because of the melanin in our skin. When we say black lives matter, we not only matter, but our lives are significant. Black lives are beautiful. We are the original creators. We are strong and soulful and soft and powerful and tender and compassionate and intelligent and articulate and poetic and creative and rhythmic and funny and kind and multifaceted. We have always mattered. Don't let them have you fooled. We do not, you do not need to be political to be moved to want to participate in this global awakening. An awakening and a tuning in to the frequency of our voices expressing our lived experiences. A tuning in to the frequency of our voices expressing our pain. And it may be our pain, but it's a struggle that isn't really ours and that we're not driving. It may be our pain, but the world is also experiencing a human pain on the whole for the state of humanity right now. 
the whole story needs to be heard and you've been done a disservice by it being kept from you. It's up to you to choose what you do with that gap in your understanding and perception of the world. We implore you to look at the world through our lens and to really see. We urge you to tell others and to fill the gaps in their knowledge. We want you to stand up to injustices on every level. It will be uncomfortable, but it's necessary and it's time. Black brothers and sisters, please focus on finding some joy for yourself, as that in itself is an act of resistance against the forces of oppression. And everyone standing with us, there is a lot of work to do. Black lives are important, black lives have always mattered, and we will continue to matter. I'm Tweety, and as I know, black lives matter. They do matter. I just want to share my experience. I'm a mother of two. I, I told my son, you don't need to be scared of your face. Just stay focused. Follow your dream. So therefore, when my son goes, he's that strong, he stay focused, he loves it, but he gets to a stage. He seems to be lost. His hope was chatting. He become convinced because of what? Because of the way he's being treated. Because they see him, oh, he is drunk. So whatsoever they do to him, it doesn't matter. So even though they kick him and he fall down, he needs free kick, please. But guess what? Because he's free. So whereas, and my son come to me, mommy, that's not fair. A child, a six year old. He just did that to me and said, you know what, just be calm. I got to understand. Is he right? So I withdraw my son away. So I move into another world, thinking I'm moving forward. But guess what? The same thing happened. So and when I see that my son is not happy, guess what? I just have to look back up again. And we were staying in the same place. Why should it be? Why should he suffer for something he hasn't done? He hasn't done nothing. He just wants to do what he enjoys doing. As we know, Black's life do matters. It happens in, in workplace as well. It happens in schools. But to be honest with you, as for me, I don't really matter. I don't really look at their face, whether they like me or they don't like me, as long as I achieve what I want to achieve. I'm good to go. But again, sometimes it can make me feel less confident. It can make me humiliated. It can even make me lost my confidence. I need you guys to show that Black's life do matters. We are in it together. Black's life matters! We were suddenly become students of history and I um, keep telling me, I keep seeing things that George Floyd wasn't a very nice bloke. Now I don't remember George Floyd dragging people in chains from Africa. Um, I don't remember George Floyd causing a, um, causing a famine that killed three million people. That would have been Winston Churchill. Um, I, don't remember him, I don't remember him dropping bombs on people. So all of a sudden the people are actually trying to justify that. And um, the bottom line is, it's time to use it. To use it, we now live in a we live in a situation where Boris and um, that idiot in the White House, which again was built by slaves, um, two sides of the same arse cheek, two, two vile racists. Um, thank you very much. And um, they, they allow all this to happen. They justify it. And Boris, Boris said something the other week that the, the Black Lives Matter meeting was some subverted by fuggery. Boris's opinions are subverted by his own racism. They're of no relevance. <laughs> simple fact of the matter is, slavery, along with the Holocaust and the slaughter in the Congo, is quite simply the single greatest crime against history, against humanity ever. Um, stripped of every vestige, every vestige of our humanity and our dignity. Um, and to be honest, 
and look at the people here, right? When the Colston statue came down last week, I'd upload about, I've been writing about this stuff for years. How many more people now know about Edward Colston who didn't know about him before? And one of the other things I heard, like that idiot who flew the, uh, flew the plane. Sorry, can you still hear me with the wind? Yeah. That idiot who flew the plane over boat. Nobody's saying that other people's lives don't matter. But we didn't write the narrative. We didn't write the narrative. Of course, everybody's life matters, but as significantly throughout history, haven't we? We weren't even given a choice. We weren't even given a choice. We, we became, you know, started off as niggers, then we became Negroes, then we went to, you know, coloured people, you know, now finally I'm um, black, the same as I've always been. Now I got sick and tired as I was growing up. The sad thing for me, everything I've heard, the young lady was saying earlier, I've been through all this and a lot more, but this isn't about me. And to hear that it's still happening to young people makes me sick to my stomach. So I got really pissed off when I was younger, having to deal with people's racist grandma or their racist mum and dad. And, and the excuse was like, Jim, like love thy neighbour, like black face, like the minstrels. Oh, that's just how it was, like slavery, that's how it was. No one ever asked us. No one asked me if I was, you know, it wasn't all right. Like the specials once said, it's the worst excuse in the world and it doesn't make it all right. It was never right, never had to For instance, I've said to some of my white friends, hold on a minute, we didn't invent a science called eugenics to prove that we were better than you, like you did. We didn't write books like The Bell Curve, just to prove, you know, they even measured the size of our skulls for fuck's sake to prove we were genetically inferior. And um, before the 1936 Olympics, um, Hitler and the Aryans, um, that last Jesse, Jesse Owens dispelled, dispelled the myth of um, Aryan supremacy in about 10 minutes. Now, I'm not asking, I've never asked to be treated, um, I don't want better treatment, I just wanted to be treated with the dignity that we deserve. And uh, Martin Luther King, just before I was born, about a week before I was born, Martin Luther King made a speech saying he had a dream. Dreaming, brother, it's 2020 and we're still here having this same conversation. And for me, it's not right, it's not changed. And anybody, I'm sorry, some people have argued with some of my supposed friends who aren't my friends, it's all lies matter, it's white lies matter. It's just an excuse, it's a caveat for your own racism or willful ignorance. The people that portray as heroes, George Washington, the slave owner and a complete racist. Thomas Jefferson, the third brother, the founding father, not only was, a rape, was he a racist, he was a rapist. He had six children with his slave girl, Sally Hemmings, and he didn't see the irony later on of um, some of them serving him at dinner. Uh, Roosevelt, racist, five, five, at least five, five American presidents, I think it's Kinley, Harding, Coolidge, Truman, and Wilson are reported to be members of the Ku Klux Klan. You know, this is Lyndon Johnson who passed the Civil Rights Movement. He signed the Civil Rights Bill in 1964. Lyndon Johnson had a black chauffeur called Robert Parker and asked Parker if he liked being called a nigger. Parker said, I'd personally, I'd rather be called by my own name. It's too unreasonable. And Johnson's reply, if you were born a nigger, you'll die a nigger, just get used to being called a nigger. And this is the man who signed the Civil Rights Bill. But these people portrayed as heroes. The same as Churchill. I've been standing here for 20 minutes and telling you about stuff Churchill's done. But when it comes down to the war, okay, so the war got tapped into the water. I know the British, I know the British said it was based on irony, but this is a statue. They, they didn't, didn't take anybody's life. You know, quite ironic, they went into the same water that the ships that he, he must had set sail from. Slaver, John Hawkins, slaver, Queen Victoria, slaver. And I'd like to ask any, any white British, I knew some of those people up at the guild earlier, and I told them they were wasting their time, because no, no one's interested in their movement. But the thing being, how would they, you're a white British, how would you feel if there were statues of um, Hitler, even in Germany? Hitler, Goebbels, Goering. People, people go mad. Even, let's, let's learn the truth. If you want to learn the truth about history, go and educate yourself. Go it's heartening, though. It's heartening to see so many young people. It's heartening to see so many white people. It's heartening to see so many black people in Port. When I first moved to Port, I didn't see any for years. So, but when it comes to the police here as well, last week, um, two sisters, two sisters who were two sisters, Nicole Smallman and Bieber Henry, they were murdered in a park in London. Two policemen have just been sacked. They were taking selfies next to the dead bodies and sent them to their mates. Two metropolitan policemen. Got to deal with in this country. Um, like I say, I'll, I'll go now. There's a lot more I could say, but I think I've said enough. Thank you very much for listening. Black Lives Matter. So I'm Sandra, and I, I'm a Portsmouth Unity and activist and a Stand Up to Racism activist. So, <laughs> We never said, I 
only black lives matter. We know all lives matter. But we need your help with Black Lives Matter, simply because black lives are in danger. They're in danger from people in jobs that are supposed to protect us. Let's go back in history a bit. Let's go to South Africa in the apartheid, apartheid times. The um, Charlottesville massacre in the 60s. Does those black lives not matter? Let's look at those young boys up in London that have been stabbed to death. Police say it's drug related. So is that not worthy of an investigation? Probably not, because they're young black boys. Does their lives not matter? And like Richie said, the two sisters at the earlier this month found dead in the London park. The police have found them disrespectful, taking photos of them, selfies, and putting it on their WhatsApp. But that's okay, because they're black people. Their lives don't matter. I'm sorry, but this is the reality. Then we go come, come to the COVID. Look at the COVID. Look how it disproportionately affects people from black and Asian minorities. Yes, there was a review, but I can tell you this. Not everything in that review was disclosed. Why? Because it's black people and their lives don't matter. Now, let me start on the government. So, they're saying black lives matter. If that's the case, why have we still got those statues of white, great white men up? I'm not telling you people to go and pull them down. I'm saying they shouldn't be there. Thank you. Also, with the government, look how they have treated the Windrush generation. They are my people from the Caribbean, and I'm very proud of that. But look how appalling they have been treated. Even today, they still, it's still not being resolved. People have died from this. And look who they put in charge of the hostile environment. A, a minister who said she was racially discriminated at school. Yet, she's still going to oversee that hostile environment, which she knows is structurally racist. Well, Portsmouth, thank you for coming out today. I see all these white faces and I know you stand with us. But I'll tell you what, you've got one good resource what you can use, and it's your voice. Continue to campaign with us. Continue with us on our issues. Be active. Be constructive. Use social media. Just stand with us. No justice! No justice! No justice! Thank you. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter!